Hello and welcome to the neuroscience and physiology of restorative yoga. I'm Lizzie Lassiter. Teaching us today is the great Mary Richards. Hi, Mary. Hi, Lizzie. So the structure of Mary's discussion today is going to be a couple of key points, and then we're going to go through specific poses and understand how they're working on a physiological level for our bodies. Where do you want to start, Mary? I want to start by giving a 30,000 foot view of what we're going to discuss today. And that is that all movement, all non-movement, our simply state of being, our simple state of being occurs in an emotional context. Okay. And what we're doing with restorative yoga is we are manipulating our nervous system to move away from a state of reactivity to a state of responsiveness. We're training our nervous system to judiciously apply the brakes on our nervous system. Okay, so you on your first key point, you say that the body has special senses linked to regions of the brain related to movement processing, planning, and patterning, sensory awareness, and perception of well-being. So how is restorative yoga affecting those special senses? Okay, so the special senses that I'm referring to in this first key point are exteroception. So is it warm or cool in the room that you're in? What's your sense of the space around you? And this is important because the largest organ of the body is the skin. And our skin tells us a lot about how we feel in an environment and the comfort of the body. Okay. And then we have something called proprioception, our body's relationship with gravity as well as our limbs relationship to our trunk. So are we moving against the pull of gravity? Are we flowing with the pull of gravity? Are we gravity neutral? And then we have enteroception, how our organs feel. Are you full? Are you hungry? Uh, You know, do, do you have congestion in your gastrointestinal system, et cetera. Then we have interoception, which is how safe do I feel in my current circumstances? Because Okay. So much, I'm going to share so my much. screen, Mary, and just make sure that I'm getting this. I'm taking notes for us. I have Mary's outline. I'm taking notes along as we go and we'll share these with you. Exteroception, proprioception, interoception. And then you're saying it's interoception with E in? Yes. Okay. Yes. So now entero, E-N-T, think enteric. Mm -hmm. That's how full do you feel, et cetera. Okay. And then intero is the, your emotional perception of safety. Okay. Okay. All right. And then we have nociception. Ooh. N-O-C-I-ception. Mm-hmm. No C-ception, and that's our perception of pain. And boy, no C-ception has a profound effect on the nervous system, especially if we choose to ignore it. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So these body senses are uh, always working in in the background or the forefront of our awareness. And uh, they affect how the motor planning, the body sensing and processing systems that determine the balance of our nervous system. They're always, they're like, okay, do we need to be plus do we need to be plus on the sympathetic 
arousal side of the nervous system or do we need to be plus on the parasympathetic, the breaking side of the nervous system? And we're manipulating these different brain regions in a way that we are moving toward plus signs on the parasympathetic. And what that does is it allows us to slow down and settle into our perceiving and processing brain regions, which then feeds more accurate planning. Okay, let me see if I got what you've said thus far, Mary. These sections, in exteroception, proprioception, interoception, interoception, and nociception. These are all working constantly to inform our nervous system whether we need to increase sympathetic tone or increase parasympathetic tone. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. And where does the emotional layer then play in? Into all of the sections. Okay, so you're saying if I'm angry or sad or, I don't know, what other emotions do we have? Disappointed. Um, Those are going to feed into the way I'm perceiving my environment? Yes. Let's play a word game for a moment. Hot under the collar. So you're feeling emotionally angry your exteroception, you may perceive the room to be warmer than you enjoy. Okay, so our dominant feeling state affects our physical state and our physical state affects our dominant state. It's a bi-directional superhighway of constant communication. Okay, so it's it's looping back in on itself. Correct. And we have different types of loops. Okay, so we have uh, negative feedback loops, meaning, okay, this is happening, so I need less of this. You know what? I'm really not under threat, so I need less cortisol, less adrenaline. Or a positive feedback loop, it is colder than I prefer. I've got... I'm, I'm shaking. I, I've got the shivers. Uh, my skin is cold to the touch. So I need more adrenaline and the like to warm my body from the inside out. And then that will motivate me to go put on a hat, you know? But these are all happening sort of subconsciously. We're not actually thinking release more adrenaline. Correct. Correct. They, these processes occur uh, automatically. They're involuntary, which is why it's so important that we dedicate a period of time every day to abide in the presence of our felt sensations. AKA restorative yoga. Restorative (laughs) yoga. Exactly. Because when we allow ourselves to simply be awareness which is a term that Richard Miller, who uh, developed integrative restoration, a type of yoga nidra practice. When we allow ourselves to abide in a state of being awareness, simply being present, that resets our nervous system in a way that down-regulates takes the pressure, takes the foot off the gas pedal of our emotional and cognitive as well as physical habits so that we can make different choices. Okay, so you're saying that just giving ourselves a spacious time to feel, to do all those sections, to feel the real-time state of our body, that positively affects the state of our body. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. 
Okay. This is fantastic. And okay. I want to ask about neurotransmitters because you have that on your key points list. I also want to make sure we're framing this conversation for teachers. Mm -hmm. So as we go.